Hey guys, it's Nana and it's been a while so we have a lot of books to talk about. So today I'm going to be doing my December slash January wrap up because I never got around to filming my December one but I don't want to just skip over the 10 books I read in December. Yeah, so I was like a reading fiend at least for me in December because I was trying so hard to finish my Goodreads goal and I made it. I read 10 books in December and I'm going to go through them somewhat quickly because this video is going to be long enough as is and I think I've talked about several of them in other videos. So yeah, let's get to it. Alright, so the first book I read in December was The Body in the Library by Agatha Christie. What can I say? Agatha Christie is always just solid, solid, solid for me. This one takes place in a small village. It's a Miss Marple mystery. And Miss Marple is called to her friend's house because they've discovered a body in their library. And she plays with the trope of finding a body in the library, you know, like in Clue, like in the library with the candlestick and just kind of pokes fun at that. And also there are a lot of great moments where like people underestimate Miss Marple and she's like, actually, just because I come from a small village life doesn't mean I don't know things. And it's really great when she puts them in their place. So enjoy this one and I gave it three out of five stars. The next book I read was The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn and this is a short story about a woman who is kind of a con artist and she pretends to be a psychic and one woman who comes to her for her services is really afraid because her house is haunted so the narrator goes to this woman's house and says she's gonna clear it of the bad juju but uh actually things happen. <laughs> thought it was really good. I mean, she just sucks you in right away. I just love her writing. I need another novel from you, Gillian Flynn. It was creepy and weird, and I was just, when it ended, I was like, oh, it's too short. Like, I want to know more. I also felt on that note that the ending, like the last maybe, I don't know what it was, I read it on my iPad, so maybe like 10 pages were a bit rushed, but enjoyed it. I want a new book from her. Gave it three out of five stars. So now we're going out of chronological order a bit, but in the month of December, I read the Lumetier Chronicles, uh, a series by Melina Marchetta. And I talked about these actually a lot in my top books of 2015, so I will link that video down below if you want to hear me go more in depth. So the basic premise of the first story is there's our main character, Finnegan, who's living a happy childhood with his father and lots of friends until the five days of the unspeakable. When a curse is put on the kingdom, the entire royal family is slaughtered, hit, including his, one of his best friends, and he is separated from his father, and half of the kingdom is trapped inside the, ki the walls, and half of the kingdom is trapped outside. So the story then picks up ten years later as Finnegan is traveling around the country, trying to find people who have been exiled from his kingdom, and trying to find his way back in. This series is so good. <laughs> I think more people need to read it. The world building is excellent. I really got immersed into that system and that country, I guess, or a group of countries. And the characters are amazing and just following them across the series and watching them grow was so, so rewarding. And the writing is great too. So if you love fantasy and you like YA, run to the series. Okay, you don't have to run because I don't I don't exercise, but make your way quickly to the series. So December was a month full of YA, so I also read the first three books in the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. So I read Cinder, I read Scarlet, which I actually have a copy of, and I also read Cress. And I picked these up because I was in the mood for a YA series. These are much beloved on booktube, so I'm sure you guys know all about them, um, but I'll go into my thoughts a little bit for each book. Cinder, I was reading it and I was like, okay, this is good, you know, interesting, interesting, but I wasn't, I didn't quite get why everyone loved it so much. But then about, maybe about halfway through, I was, I started to get really invested and I started to care more about Cinder, and by the end I was totally hooked. So I think Cinder is a great character. Um, she's probably my favorite out of the main characters in each of the books. And I really like some of the twists that Myers put on the original fairy tale. Like, nothing is too crazy, but she's done some interesting things, I think. And it's definitely a very fun, entertaining series. So I moved right on to Scarlet, and I bought it because my library didn't have it on ebook or in physical copy. I was home in California, so I was like, okay, 
I need to keep going with the series. And I like Scarlet too. What I really like about this series is the way that she interweaves these fairy tales. Like that to me is so interesting and I think she's done a really good job with that. So Scarlet is, you know, Red Riding Hood and Big Bad Wolf and the way their paths cross with Cinder I think was really great. As I was reading reviews I saw criticism that we kind of go backwards in this book, um, more we get more backstory rather than moving the plot forward, and I totally see that. But I enjoyed that we got introduced to some good new characters, and I really liked the new setting in France. I thought that was interesting. Then I moved on to Cress, and this is my least favorite of the series so far. Cress as a character just, uh, she got on my nerves, she got on my nerves. And I get that she's supposed to be this like naive, sheltered person. But just compared to Cinder and Scarlet, who are so independent and kind of capable of handling anything, Cress was so... she was so helpless. Um, and I really just wanted her to, like, get a stronger backbone and, like, fight for herself. Which, she's, which she did start to do, so I appreciated that her character grew throughout the book. But I'm still really pleased that we got more of Thorn in Cress, because I really like him as a character. It's charming and, like... Uh, cynical but and sarcastic but also underneath all that bravado you know there's a real person with real feelings I don't know I'm a, I'm a sucker for that kind of character so I love that there was more thorn in that book and now I'm really excited to read the fourth book in the series winter I don't know when I'm gonna get to it but I'm just really curious to see how she wraps everything up I started yet another YA series in December, and that is the His Fair Assassin series, and I read the first book, Grave Mercy, by Robin Lefevers. So this is about a young girl who has a terrible childhood, and in the very beginning she is able to escape, and she's taken to a nunnery. But these are not your ordinary nuns. No, no, these are nuns that are training to be assassins. I mean, as a premise, come on, that's so good, right? Like, young girls, young nuns training to be assassins, so good. This book follows Ismay on her journey to be an assassin, and uh, she gets her first assignments. And I believe the next two books follow two other characters from the nunnery that we meet briefly in the first book. So I enjoyed this one. There are historical elements which I found really interesting, and there's a lot of political intrigue and court life, which I just love, love, love that kind of stuff. I really enjoyed the writing too. I felt like it really fit in with the setting and creating that world that she lives in. There were a few things that bothered me, particularly one scene toward the end. I was like, really? Really? That's how you're gonna play that? Um, but I still think the premise is excellent. I think she did a good job of executing it. And I would continue on with the series. I don't know that I'm going to do that anytime soon, but I would continue on with the series. And I gave Grave Mercy 3 out of 5 stars. And the last book I read in December was Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. So I don't know if I've mentioned this on the channel, but totally love vampire stories. I'm totally into paranormal elements and vampires, witches, werewolves. Sign me up. So I was really excited to read this one that's such a big part of pop culture. And I liked it. I thought it was good. I mean, it was more philosophical than I thought it was going to be. Louis is a miserable vampire and he spends the entire book questioning his life, his purpose, and why he's still on earth basically. So there's a lot more philosophical talk in the book than I expected and a discussion of right and wrong and morality. I think for me Claudia was the most interesting character. Just the idea of a child vampire who is as ruthless and kind of unfeeling as she is is terrifying. Like, oh my god, so scary. She's definitely the scariest of them, of the three main vampires to me. It was a bit over the top, the whole book, I think, in some ways, and like, I don't know what the right word is. I think melodramatic is the right word, but I liked that, you know, to a certain degree, and I gave the book three stars, and then right afterwards, I watched the movie. It's from the 1990s, I think, so the special effects are like, <laughs> you know, like, it's not even that long ago, but it's just like so funny. But I like the movie as well. Gosh, January was such a good reading month for me, so it's hard to pick favorites, but I've got to say that the first book I read in January was already one of my favorites of the year, and that's Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Woo! This book. Woo! Oh my gosh. I mean, I'd heard that it was amazing and everyone was right. It was amazing. This is about a mixed race family living in Ohio in the 70s and their beloved child, Lydia, 
has died. And it's about how they cope with that death and how the shock of that reverberates throughout the family. This is so good. Beautiful, heart-wrenching, tear-jerking, just beautifully written. I'm just thinking about this book and Celeste Ng does such an amazing job of capturing these feelings of grief, of otherness, of being a teenager, <laughs> of family dynamics. Oh my gosh, she just did everything right in this book. I'm just adding to the hype, but if this has been on your list, pick it up because it's so good. It's short, you can read it fairly quickly. I'm also planning to do a review on this one, so stay tuned for that as well. <laughs> the Expatriates by Janice Y.K. Lee, and this came out in January, but I actually found this finished hard copy at the Strand in the half price new books section in December before I went home for Christmas. I'd read her previous novel, The Piano Teacher, and I remember enjoying it, even though it was years and years ago. So I was really excited when I saw her name on a new book. So this is a story of three women who are expats in Hong Kong. There's a woman named Mercy who is a young 20-something trying to figure out her life, as we all are. There is Margaret who's dealing with a great trauma that's recently occurred in her life. And there is Hillary whose marriage is on the rocks, but she's hoping more than anything else that she can become a mother. I thought this was really beautiful. It was beautifully written and I really admire the way she chooses her words because she's able to convey so much just by the word choice and the way that the sentence is written. The story was so interesting to me, particularly the fact that it's expats living in Hong Kong. I've always wondered what it would be like to pick up and move your life somewhere else for an extended period of time. I mean, I've lived abroad for a couple months in the summer and thought like I could really make myself at home here, but you know, that's only a couple months, so I really wonder what it would be like if you did that for a year, two years, three years. If anyone is an expat and has read this book, I'd love to hear what you thought, if you were able to connect to some of the feelings that she describes about being away from home and adjusting to another culture and other customs. So I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four out of five stars. Also, I am planning to do a review on this one, so I would stay tuned for that if you want to hear me go more in depth about this one. So I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I have a list of books that I really wanted to read in 2015 but didn't get to. So Everything I Never Told You was definitely on that list. This next book is on that list, and it's The Fisherman by Chigozie Obioma. So I've been really excited to read this one. One, because I've heard such great things. Two, because he's an emerging Nigerian author, and I'm here to support that. So I finally got around to this one. It's about four brothers living in a town called Akure in Nigeria, and it's about their childhood, and, and in particular what happens to them one day after a madman gives them a prophecy about their lives. This was really beautifully written. I think the fairy tale fable elements of it are really interesting. I like the way that Obioma wove African proverbs and folklore into the story, and there was definitely a lyricism about this that I really enjoyed. Just having the book set in Nigeria, again, that different perspective is something that I found so interesting. There were things that I asked my parents about because they are also Nigerian, and uh, although they grew up in a different region, you know, I was like, like, oh, have you heard of this town, the blah, 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 and it was just really interesting to talk to my dad about this book a little bit, and yeah, so I really enjoyed this. I will say that it didn't grab me as much as I thought it was going to. I was invested in the story, but like only up to here, not up to like here. So there was, throughout there was some distance for me as a reader, but that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it because I definitely did. I do think that he's one to watch, and I'm excited to see what his next book will be like. And and I think it's astonishing that this is a debut, because it's just so well done. So I gave this 3 out of 5 stars. In January so far, I'm doing okay with my classic goal of reading one classic a month, because I reread The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Ugh, this book is so great! That's what I'm finding about the, the few books that I do reread. I revisit them and discover that they are even better than I remembered, and that's how it was for this one. I know I've read it before and liked it, but just reading this recently and starting right away, I was like, ah, oh, I love this. This is so good. I think a lot of Oscar Wilde's comments on youth and beauty and vanity and society and how all of those things are tied together still hold true today. In particular, I thought it was interesting 
the way that Dorian Gray's life was so heavily influenced by his friendship with Lord Henry and just the idea that one person can come into your life and totally flip it on its head and change its course completely. Because, you know, what would it have been like if he had never met Lord Henry? Would he have remained young and innocent and carefree or would he have found his way to that darker path some other way? So this one is great. It's a short read full of great quotes and interesting insights into society and I highly recommend it and I gave it four stars. And then I don't know if it's winter or what but I was really in the mood for a mystery sort of thriller crime book something dark and twisted so I picked up Eeny Meeny by MJ Arledge and this one I first saw on Crime by the Book's Instagram feed and it sounded intriguing. So two people are abducted from the side of a road and placed in an abandoned location and they can't escape. They get a message from the killer that says only one of you is going to walk out of here and they are left with a gun. So yeah, basically they're trapped and there's only one way out. And this is the first book in a series that follows Detective Helen Grace who is a detective inspector. I hope I got her rank right, um, at a police force is in the UK. She's trying to find these people and track down this criminal. This I thought was okay. Entertainment wise, as far as keeping me guessing and turning the pages and, you know, not anticipating all of the twists, I thought this book was entertaining. Otherwise, I thought the dialogue was not good. I had two problems. One, there were places where the author wrote that so-and-so said this to so-and-so and then told this person so-and-so and then that person responded so such and such and I was like wouldn't it make a lot more sense to have dialogue here like it didn't make sense that the author was telling us about this conversation it made more sense to me that there would be actual dialogue there but when there was dialogue it was not good oh my god yeah I didn't think the writing in this was great to be honest and also the characters are pretty one-dimensional I mean, I do know this is going to be a series, so with any first book in the series, there's a lot of setting up to do, but I don't know, the characters were pretty one-dimensional to me, so hopefully there's some growth and some development in the next book in the series. But I thought the mystery was interesting to a point, and this was entertaining, and yeah, it was what I was in the mood for at the time, so I gave this two and a half stars out of five. It's the kind of book where I'm not sure I could recommend it, but I would probably keep going in the series because sometimes you just want an entertaining book, you know? <laughs> I think those are all the books I read in December and January. I just want to say a massive thank you to you guys for sticking around, for new people subscribing even though I have not been posting consistently. Thank you. I mean, I'm really surprised at that. And yeah, just, just chatting with me. I don't know. You guys are great and I really miss it when I'm not as consistent as I'd like to be, but I know that hopefully some of you guys don't mind sticking around. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for watching this long video. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about or if you want to read them. Also tell me what your favorite book of January was. I think mine was Everything I Never Told You. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to talk to me elsewhere, I am on Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, Snapchat. I will leave all my links, usernames down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.